Welcome to another tutorial. This is Dr. Brian Burton. I'm here to show you how to develop a simple application for your Android device, whether it be a phone or one of the new tablets that's on the market. In this particular tutorial, we're going to look at the basics of doing an XML-based layout and the coding that's required then to connect that layout to your program. So let's get started. Now, layouts for the Android are done in an XML fashion. Um, if you've ever worked with XML designing for web pages or other types of devices, you'll realize that XML is a makes complete sense for developing for something like this, but it does tend to be a little text-based instead of graphics. So it's nice to have some kind of a GUI interface for doing this. Now Eclipse does come with a simple editing tool for being able to do your XML layout for your Android, or you can use something like DroidDraw, which I've uh, just learned about, which is at www.droiddraw.org. Uh, it's a donation-based application for developing applications, uh, the XML code for applications on Android devices. So I'm going to show you very quickly how you could edit it in Eclipse, and then I'm going to shift over to DroidDraw to create my simple button-based program and then we'll do the coding for it. This is the Hello World project that I've done previously as a tutorial. Now I wanted to show where the XML based data and information is for this particular project. If you open up your project and go to the res folder down to layout, you'll see a main XML file. If you double click on that it'll open up and open up the Eclipse editor as well. And there you can see my Hello World project, as well as a variety of views and tools that can be seen in this. Now this is for the graphical layout. We could drag and drop information over and be able to right click on it and adjust the layout, the height, properties of the basic particular widget that we were dragging over there. Or we can go straight into the XML code and be able to see what's there and how to edit that. Another method that you can use for doing your editing is the, as I mentioned, the Droid Draw. Now, Droid Draw, once you download it and run it, is just a simple, easy to use program. Um, you can, and I'm going to show you how, I'm going to go ahead and use the Droid Draw for creating the basics of this project. It could all be done in the Eclipse editor just as easily, but. Um, I'm going to show how this could be used. So I'm going to change to a relative layout as my root layout for Droid Draw. Then go over here to Layouts, drag a linear layout over here to the top of my screen, right click, or I'm sorry, click select it and go over to Properties and change what the size of this particular layout is going to be. So I'm going to change this to 200 pixels by 200 pixels. We can go ahead and adjust the background color for this particular application. I'll go with a dark gray. And we could have room to also adjust padding, uh, visibility, the orientation of it, um, etc. So I'm going to apply that. And as you can see, I've now got a layout in my graphical interface there. I'm going to go over here to widgets. And for this particular demonstration, I'm going to need a couple of text views. So I'm going to drag a text view over lock it to the linear layout, drag a second text view over, also linear layout, and then a button, and I'm going to put it down here at the bottom below my layout. So this first text, I'm going to select it, go back here to properties, and for this one, I'm just going to add some text for the viewer. Uh, this little project, when we click on the button, is going to give the correct date and time. And that, that's the functionality that's going to be incorporated inside of it. So let's tell the user what they're seeing. So the correct time is, and I apply it, and you can see it changes up there. I can adjust the font size, uh, the font face, as well as the style. I'll go ahead and bold that so it stands out a little bit more. And then my text view below the correct time is... I'm going to change the ID for use in my programming and just simply call it time. I'm going to set the width to this to 100 pixels. 
I can go ahead and change the background color if I should want to. Uh, I'm going to remove all of the text that will be applied by the program. So we'll just simply delete that and simply do an apply. And you can see the box is still there, uh, but there's nothing in there. Maybe I want to center that a little bit. So let's go to a center, apply that. There we go. Now it's centered inside my uh, box layout that I had created. And then the last thing I'm going to go over is here to the button. And I'm going to change it to time button. And go ahead and change the text inside the button as well. And apply. There we go. We have uh, show time. Uh, let's, let's just reduce that down to just time. So it looks good. There we go. Now, this is the real cool thing. Once we've got this all laid out the way we want it to, all we need to do is click on generate and it generates the XML code that can be cut and paste into our application. So I'm just going to highlight all of that and do a copy and go back to my Eclipse editor. And now I'm going to want to start a new project for this particular application. So I'll do a new project select that it is an Android project next and go ahead and give it a name and we'll call it um, Android time just so I'll know exactly what I'm doing now it's generally recommended when we are selecting the build target that you go for the lowest possible API for your project well that may be the case but I'm going to go ahead and select uh, 2.1 for my base target my base API which would be the API 7 the application is just going to be date and time and this is the user friendly version the package name should be your reverse URL The create activity is, of course, the name of our main routine in this project. For mine, I'm going to just simply name it my time. And then my SDK version is 7. So we can click on next and get this started. And finish. And so now I've got my Android time all created. I'll go down here to the layout, res layout main XML and go ahead and load that in. I'm going to go over to the main XML and paste in my layout. There we go. And if I go back to the graphic layout, you'll see that it shows it in the environment. Apparently it doesn't like my dark gray attribute in the background but we'll move on from there and not worry about this that at this particular time. It does show up when I do a mouse over. Okay, so we've got our main XML. I'll go ahead and save that and then we'll go back to the source code to get busy on coding the actual Java file. So to start coding we need to add a few imports so that our application knows where to find and how to interact with the button, how to work with the view, and how to get the date and time. Fortunately all that coding has been done for us so we're just simply using instances of code that other people have been using. So, but we do need to import it into our program so that we properly use it. Now if you're new to Java I highly recommend that you view the tutorials that I've been posting to the burtonsmediagroup.com forward slash blog area on Java programming. I'm slowly getting up a full year's worth of tutorials that I've done previously for college level classes on Java programming. So let's go ahead and import what we need to import. So 
So what I just entered was an android.view.view, an android.widget.button, and Java utilities date, which will return the system date and time. Well, it looks like we need to import one more thing. We need to import our text view so that it'll work correctly inside our, our uh, application. So we'll do an import Android widget text view. There we go. Now we're ready to extend our class a little bit more. We've got public class my time extends activity, but we also need it to implement the uh, click listener. So we're going to implement view dot on click listener and then a curly bracket. Um, and let's go ahead and set up a couple of variables inside this class. So we need a button variable to hold our button object and we need a text view object. There we go. We've got both of those now. Uh, the public void on create is fine. It sets our content view as you can see. The last line there is set content view for the R layout main which opens up our main.xml and loads all of that to the display there. So let's set our button to the XML content inside the environment and that'll be just simply button equals a button. It's an instance of a button and this dot find view by ID and the ID that we want it to be associated with we named in our XM, our main XML file so it'll be r dot ID dot and then whatever you named the button in my case it was time button and if you've forgotten what you name it you can always go back to your main XML and look for it inside your code uh, there's mine the Android ID is associated as time button um, I did have a couple things throw errors in my main XML as I was looking closer at it. It did not have the ability to do the draw for the dark gray, so I deleted that line out of my XML. And it also didn't like centering the text view, so I deleted that from the layout as well. So anything that's throwing an X there for the time being, at least with the 2.1 that I'm working with right now, that's not accepted inside of it, so I just simply deleted it from the XML layout. So back to mytime.java. Uh, we've got our button set up. Last, next thing we need to do is set up our text view. And I'm going to name that button as we did before, text v. And that is set equal to a text view. And it is this.findView. And the ID is r.id. And we named it time inside of our XML. There we go. And when it turns blue like this, you know that it found it. So we're in good shape there. And now we need to set the button up to be a button. In other words, associate it with the listener. So button dot set on click. So button set on click listener and parentheses this and then we're going to call an update time routine which we haven't created yet so update time and we'll do our close brackets that's the end of that particular routine and we need to set up what needs to happen when someone does a click so public void on click view capitalized and view, lowercase v, curly bracket, and we'll again call update time. So when they click on it, it calls the listener, and the listener then calls the on click, and on click then calls update time. And then, we, of course, we need something to handle the actual 
posting of the time. So we'll create a private routine. So private void update time. And text view dot set text, which calls says associate whatever I put in these uh, parentheses with the text view or the label, and we're going to set the value of the text to this. So new date to string. So it'll automatically convert all of this information to a string, so it'll cor correctly display in the view. And then we've got two curly brackets at the end, and everything's ready to go. Now, you need to save your application. And once you're done, you need to go ahead and launch or run Android time. Now, I went ahead and already launched this. It may take several minutes for the Android time to actually launch on your system. Um, it took about five minutes for it to load on my particular system, and my system's fairly beefy, so it doesn't do too bad of a job. But you may have to wait a little while while it loads the whole Android operating system to the simulator and then you'll, you may need to even go back again and launch it again so that it's running inside the environment. So there I've got my Android date and time. The correct time is Wednesday, February 9th. Hit the time and you can see that it updates it every time I click the button. So my application is a success. It works. It probably won't make me any money, but I have successfully used the text view and the buttons as well as create an XML layout inside the IDE for Eclipse to create an Android project. If you are interested in more tutorials, please visit our website burtonsmediagroup.com forward slash blog. I have lots of tutorials on iPhone, Android, Corona, and Unity programming as well as Java programming so that you can learn lots of hopefully valuable information to, for making that killer app that you've always wanted to do.